Hey Brush Monkeys, welcome back. This week we are looking at Howl and Yip from Ninja All Stars. And it's basically a cartoon chibi version of Lone Wolf and Cub. Really? You can see the little baby on his back and he's double fisting the samurai sword. He looks a pretty badass little dude. Um, some of you may recall about a year ago I did the uh, Arcadia Quest chibis and a couple of months ago I did uh, some more Arcadia Quest uh, besides you go Jimbo heroes <laughs> and this week and next we're looking at uh, Ninja All-Stars got Howlin' Yip next week I've got a ninja called the uh, Arashikage next week um, Ninja All-Stars is one of those games where everything they do is chibis like Arcadia Quest and they they're just fantastic little I mean, look at a look at a character on this guy. He's just fantastic. So I'm looking forward to getting getting in on him. I like painting chibis. It's kind of a, a fun break from painting more realistic looking figures, and they're a fun little challenge to try to get that sort of cartoony anime style right. Um, as usual, I've got my um, mini manager here with all the uh, pictures plotted out based on. Uh, his picture based on his box art so I'm gonna try to stick as close to that as I can I also want to talk for a second about this little resource um, this is just a website that I printed out um, unfortunately I don't have the website on me but basically if you do a search for ethnic skin tones there's a big um, article that covers all kinds of not well I'd say non-white skin tones but it actually does get into white people a little later on but it goes from everything from like full-on African, African-American, Australian Aborigines, um, Indians, uh, Chinese, all the way up to, I'm, look, I'm using the Japanese instructions today, and it breaks it all down in Vallejo paints. So when I was learning how to paint ethnic skin tones for another project, I downloaded this and I took this sheet to, uh, to my local game store to look up it lists the numbers for all the Vallejo paints that you need to do this and it it's fantastic and you can do it for any of them like Pacific Islanders uh, Native Americans and it does eventually get into like Mediterranean Scandinavian Irish you know shade of white people but it breaks down how to how to do all these different skin tones so this is a great resource. If you get a chance, look it up. Just do a search for ethnic skin tones, and it's a like 15-page article that uh, goes into how to do it. And uh, this is a great resource if you're not familiar with painting other nationalities. Um, that's the recipe I'm going to be using to paint his and Yip's uh, skin tones. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and get started on that, and then we'll come back and see how he looks. All right. See you soon. Bye. All right, Brooks Monkeys, we're back. We're only a few colors in, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, plan I had for this guy. Uh, again, following that Ethnic Skin Tones article, I based Howl in uh, Chocolate Brown and then layered him in uh, Tan Earth, Vallejo Tan Earth. For Yip, I wanted a slightly lighter skin tone, so I based him in the Tan Earth and layered him in cork brown. Now that cork brown and basic skin tone are going to be the highlights for Howl. Uh, but first I'm going to shade wash both of them with Secret Weapon Flesh Wash. Now the Secret Weapon Flesh Wash is one of those weird things that I've bought uh, four bottles of it now and I've got four different colors of flesh wash. Like one's a little more brownish, this one's a little more yellow, um, one's a little more reddish, and the new one seems to be a little bit kind of orange. <laughs> it's like they can't come up with a consistent... Normally I love secret weapon washes, and these are fantastic washes, um, but they're a little inconsistent on their colors from bottle to bottle. Um, so you may be wondering why I bought four bottles of flesh washes, because between the first and second bottle, um, I uh, 
I kind of forgot that I had flesh wash already. <laughs> and so when it came time to, yeah, between, between this bottle and this bottle, I kind of forgot I had flesh wash already. So, um, so I bought another bottle of it. And then I realized there were two different colors. So you can see that one's kind of a much more brown color. What I've got, bear with me a second here. So the one I'm using is a little more, it's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of hard to see on camera, but the one I'm using, it looks a little more brown on camera, but it's actually a little more yellow. Um, but I've got a marked flesh wash one, flesh wash two. So there's part of the fun. And then the third one I picked up is this one, this flesh wash. And it's uh, quite a bit more reddish orange. Being, see, that's not the same color at all. So this is the one I'm using on the guys. I'm gonna let the um, skin dry a little bit and then I'm gonna give it a shade wash. And then when we come back, like I said, I'm going to um, highlight Howl with the cork brown. And then highlight it, do a further highlight with the basic skin tone. And with uh, Yip, I'm just going to give him the highlight of the basic skin tone and leave it at that. Um, so hopefully this will come out fairly well. Um, also, you can kind of see where I've gone back and reinforced the chocolate brown on his eyes and eyelids because I wanted that kind of outline for when I go to do the ivory on the eyes I wanted a nice clean uh, kind of brown outline around his eyes so I think that'll help um, yeah so he's actually coming along fairly well I really like how that uh, that came out a lot smoother than I thought it would on the top there yeah so anyway Gonna go shade wash him and then we'll come back and see how he looks. Alright, bye. Alright, brush monkeys, we're back. And as you can see, I've got the skin all layered up. I thought it might be a little hard to tell what was going on with the skin without everything else being painted, so I went ahead and did the eyes. As you can see there, and I did the hair. Got that nice nightmare black on the hair. So I'm pretty chuffed with how he's coming out so far. He looks pretty good. A little angry little samurai, angry little cartoon samurai guy. Did his teeth and everything. Um, so, so that's that so far. Um, I'm gonna do his uh, gi and hakama next, and then um, yeah, I'll do the gi, the hakama, and the little uh, barren thing that, that he's got yip in. And then we'll come back and take a look at it and uh, see how he looks. All right, see you soon. Bye. All right, brush monkeys, I've made some more progress on our guy here. I've got his gi and his hakama painted and highlighted up, and he looks pretty good. The highlight, the Corvus Black highlights on the hakama, I really like Corvus Black as a way of highlighting black because. It's so subtle, but it's still effective. You can tell where all the pleats are. You can tell the where the belt differentiates from the Hakama, and it just looks fantastic. I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm sure when it's matte sealed, it's going to look uh, even better. It's going to take some of that shine away, and it's going to going to come down to to looking black highlighted with a very very dark gray. I like it better than Eschen Gray. Eschen Gray to me is a little bit more of a stark, uh, obviously gray look to it. You kind of almost have to thin it down and wash it on there. Also did his scabbards in red. I did scabbards in uh, Vallejo Game Color, uh, heavy red, extra opaque, heavy red. And that was mostly because the box art, if you could see that, had his scabbards as red. I don't know if you could tell that on that camera, but yeah. So that's how he's looking compared to his box art so far. So I got this little um, sash here and the bairn 
that Yip is in. That's all going to be apothecary white, so I'm going to base it with matte white and then go over it with apothecary white and then uh, be ready to do his swords. So he's coming along pretty nicely. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take a break here and do that, and then we'll come back and see how he looks. All right, see you soon. All right, I'm back, and I've got his sash painted, and a little baron on the back painted, and that apothecary white has brought out all the little, well, little detail there is, but it's it's accentuated. It looks good. I got his feet painted too. There, and he's looking pretty spiffy. I really like how he's looking so far. So I got his swords left and his base. The swords are basically just going to be black and steel, Reaper Master Series, uh, yeah, black and steel, and then um, a little bit of uh, the Reaper Master Series Pathfinder Crusader Silver for the edges of his blades, there. and then uh, his base, I'm going to do the wood planks here in uh, Xandri Dust and the sand in Ushabti Bone both in the rocks with the uh, Mechanicus Standard Gray and I'm going to wash all that with Agrax Earthshade and then uh, probably highlight, highlight it a little bit um, if nothing else I'll at least dry brush everything with the Tyrant Skull to kind of burn out that wood grain and the sand and what have you so yeah and then uh, his base band I think is going to just be black so he's going to look pretty spiff so I'm going to go ahead and do the swords, then take a break, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll take one last look at him before I do the basing. And then after the basing, he's going to be pretty well done. So we got two more segments to this video. So I will see you soon. Bye. All right, we're back, and I've got his swords all painted up. They look pretty good. Pretty happy with how those turned out so all that's left to do on him is his base and I decided to change things up a little bit instead of doing um, the boards in Xandri uh, dust excuse me and the dirt in Shabti bone and then the rocks and everything well, dirt and sand um, and the rocks and gray I'm going to still do the Shabti bone on the sand but I'm also going to do it on the boards too, and then I'm going to use um, Wildwood Contrast Paint on the boards to kind of get that nice wood grain look to it. And then the uh, sand will be dry brushed with Tyrant Skull. Because I really like how that turns out, and I think that's going to look good. Uh, the rocks, I'm going to do uh, Mechanica Standard Gray still, and possibly a light dry brush of Dogstone. And then his base band is going to just be black. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause here and go do all that. And then uh, the next time you see this guy, I think he's going to be completely done. All right. So I will see you soon. Bye. And there he is, boys and girls. Our finished uh, Howl and Yip. From the Ninja All-Stars game. I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. with how they turned out, excuse me, forget the little pup on them there, it's Ninja All-Stars take on uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, a little cartoony version, I think it looks pretty spiff, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a day on this one, next week we'll start in on Arashikage, the Ninja, so I have one Samurai, one Ninja. Thanks for watching. Now we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Hey, Brush Monkeys, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like down below. Um, if you want to be notified when new videos come out, click subscribe. And uh, 
in the meantime, if you want to see how to add one of the miniatures that we've painted on this channel to your own collection, check out our Instagram, uh, Tumblr, and uh, Patreon sites. Uh, if you want to support, support us in doing what we do, check out my Patreon site. Check out my uh, merch store at storefrontier.com slash flymonkeystudios. You can get t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, all kinds of stuff there. Um, go check that out. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.